The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Though Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4 through 7 and 8 teaches to us pertaining to the things of tribulation, the principle of that is still applicable today in the church. The only reason why we are telling is the Roman Catholicism followed the same principles of that. They have followed to such kind of a great extension that they have completely, in their arrogance, ignored the infallible and inerrant word of Bible doctrine. This infallible and inerrant truth which has to be taught through proper isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word with the dispensing technique of dispensation in the pulpits today have been absolutely nullified by this man. This man, they thought it could be great for them to follow the rituals, the sacraments, the purgatory. They thought the catechism could be great. And they thought the sacraments and the authority should be only by the Pope of the Roman Catholic. But never they have thought that the vicar of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is Lord God, is Lord God the Holy Spirit. And it is he who is going to teach us and rule us and tell us the truth. But we are no longer interested in these things because the Protestant reforms dissented from the Roman Catholic Church over several essential points of doctrine. The Reformation clarified the issue of justification by faith, but none of the Reformers, neither Calvin, Luther, Zwingli, gave a lucid description of the believer's post-salvation way of life, salvation which is by faith in Christ, but they have not known after salvation what. The same thing is ruling, even in the trends of today's Christendom, even in the pulpits of today's Christendom, that the ministers do not know after salvation what. The ministers have not learned to know exactly what it could mean that it should be that after salvation some unique spiritual life. The way the Roman Catholicism really have not turned out even they are following the same trends today. They are still seeking and searching out. But they have not opened the Bible to learn, to look and to read. And they have not really taught the fear of God, but rather they have taught the fear of men. And this fear of men, they have really made them blinding their eyes towards looking upon Christ and towards doctrine. And in fact, even indeed today we can find in the Roman Catholic pulpits, men who are interested just to follow some rituals, traditions, and think that this is the right one, this is the true one, this could be the great one. As at the time of Jeremiah, even as such we can find at the time of Jeremiah chapter 12, verses 16 and 17, a great lessons for us to be learned. In verses 10 and 11 he concludes, pastors have destroyed. When it comes to 11 and 16 and 17, Jeremiah has been inspired by the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, as our Lord God the Holy Spirit tells him to write. He pens around and to tell for us, if this people will not change their ways, if this people will not come to the righteousness, if this people will not add fruit unto the holiness of Jehovah, then I will utterly destroy them. I will pluck them out. And what a great shame it would be that though in this period of great alikainikitesis with the polytema privileges of the church age believers, the late medieval Roman Catholicism times are still being ruled. Though our Lord given the polytema privileges, we don't want to look upon it, to learn upon it, to think upon it. 
That is what it has become a great pain. The mechanics for the Christian way of life are no clearer to Christians today than in the darkness of the late medieval Roman Catholicism. Emotionalism and empty ritual dominate many churches today. Mysticism supplants object to knowledge of Bible doctrine. Good deeds are being taught as an approach to God. Morality is distorted into legalistical asceticism and is preached as a substitute for Christian virtue. Christian service is enforced through guilt, fear, penance, doubt concerning one's own eternal status, or false hope of divine blessing. Things. Political activism precludes divine viewpoint thinking and there are endless schemes to raise money. Furthermore, these age-old practices, which the Reformation did not eradicate, squander the riches that God has given to every church age believer squander the unsearchable riches, untraceable riches. The legalism that emerged from the Reformation may differ in specifics from Roman Catholicism legalism, but it is just as ineffective in defining or defining post-salvation Christian experience. Therefore, dear brethren, in, in order to know and understand the word of the Lord, the doctrine of dispensations have to be among the basic doctrines that every believer must comprehend. This doctrine enables us to recognize the biblical mechanics for the Christian way of life. Dispensations clarify the truth that the humanity of Christ established the pattern for us. Jesus, our Lord, is the author and perfecter of our doctrine. He pointed the protocol plan of God. He tested and proved it under the divine dinosphere of the prototype. And when our Lord God the Father is able to do it through his Son, he is also able to do it by us. Designed by God the Father, energized by Lord God the Holy Spirit, being tested by Christ, it is now our absolute life because under most extreme pressure our Lord endured it as a substitute. Therefore, our Lord's death after the same infinite power of God has been designed and energized the divine dinosphere, demolished all satanic and human opposition by rising Christ from the dead and seating him at right hand of God the Father. Both the omnipotence of God the Father and the omnipotence of Lord God the Holy Spirit were agents of Christ's resurrection. Now we live live in the power of his resurrection, Philippians 3, 10. Divine omnipotence and divine problem solving devices are now found in the operational divine dinosphere which belongs to every church age believer we are commanded to put on the lord and savior jesus christ in romans 13 14 to have christ formed in us galatians 4 19 to have christ at home which is so much essential in our hearts to exalt in our bodies which has been told for us in philippians and furthermore the plan of god for the church age believer is a supernatural plan that demands a supernatural means of execution the infinite power of god therefore go silently into effect in our lives when we follow the mandates of his protocol plan. This system of divine power available only to the church can handle any difficulty in our lives and will glorify Christ as in no other dispensation. Therefore, we are united with Christ forever. The Trinity indwells every believer in the face of this astonishing truth with profound reverence we ask after salvation what the simplified answer is learn bible doctrine church age doctrine sets forth the protocol of christ's royal family in mystery doctrine we learn of the portfolio god established personally for each of us in eternity past this portfolio contains outright gifts from god the father that define the scope of our freedom and responsibility that is what a theory of freedom with responsibility we are the aristocrats of heaven residing on earth we are the royal priests we are the royal Ambassadors. We have an unprecedented opportunity to utilize divine power and God stands ready to enlarge our already vast resources when we are walking in integrity of the truth. If we learn, understand and apply his word, he will stimulate our own desire to know him more and more, lead us into eternally meaningful services and lift us above our sufferings. He will create an impact with our lives that will resound throughout eternity and time because by leaving behind a legendary impact, our royal destiny is to become invisible heroes in the most intense and challenging dispensation of all time in this church age of human history. Therefore, dear brethren, the Roman Catholicism people were failed, and absolutely they have lost that which has to be for Christ. But we need not be so. We have to win. We can win only when we get out from the ignorance and only when we get out from the negative evolution towards doctrine. The Lord provides faithfully in this unique dispensation of the church age the certain key pastor teachers throughout the entire church age till the rapture could occur. He has been providing faithful pastors who are been rightly dividing the word of the Lord. They don't want to desire for the glory of their own self. Neither they are desiring for money. They are coming only for the righteousness of God to desire his glory. And 
and they are the one who in whom you will find no guile therefore dear brethren you need to be very much cautious you should be very much cautious because this life is unique the power given for us is unique the same power which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been, has been executed now we through the same resurrection power of Christ in Philippians 3 as it been stands written we enjoy this work but in the only divine dinosphere which has been given and designed for each and every believer to execute this protocol plan and to leave behind an eternally meaningful service for Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall continue in the next step. Father, we are grateful for the privilege of us giving the fellowship of the word. Help us to amend thy ways so that we could be absolutely for thy glory, so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.